In Auditoria, acoustics are a key factor. Expert advice from specialist consulting engineers Poets on acoustics and other aspects therefore usually plays an important role during the design process of new auditoria. Poets is settled in London, Paris, Dusseldorf, Zoetermeer and Moak in the Netherlands and has around 150 employees. Poets is active in room acoustics, noise control, building physics and architectural acoustics, environmental technology and electroacoustics. In Moak, Poets has several laboratories housing a wide range of measuring equipment such as climate chambers for comfort measurements, a wind tunnel to measure wind velocities and wind pressures around buildings, and a large acoustics laboratory for sound absorption and insulation measurements. In this laboratory, several scale models are situated. These are used to study sound propagation in concert halls and theatres. Poets also uses acoustic computer models, but persists in using scale models for auditoria with curved shapes, because of the physical imperfections of computer models. This is one of the reasons that Poets was appointed for the refurbishment of the Royal Albert Hall that started in 1995. I'm now sitting in front of the scale model of the Royal Albert Hall, a 1 to 12 scale model that has been built in the laboratories of Poets here in Moak in the Netherlands. Uh, amongst 12 of the world's leading acoustical officers, Poets was appointed for this job because Poets were able to convince the principal of the immense importance of the use of scale models above computer models. Uh, we started with making this, the exterior of the scale model and then we modeled all the materials inside. Uh, to tell you something about the materials we have used, there is, for instance, all the audience, uh, the audience materials, the mushrooms as they are hanging from the ceiling, and also the cove. Uh, one of the aspects of the acoustics were to investigate the impact of the cove and the impact of the domed ceiling on the acoustics of the hall. And there was a great desire to improve the acoustics of the hall, or at least not to make it worse during the uh, refurbishment of the concert hall. An important parameter in room acoustics is the reverberation time. Applying absorption material and the choice of materials can strongly influence this reverberation time. We are now standing in front of the reverberation room. Why is it called reverberation room? It is because there is a lot of reverberation in this room. All the reflections take a long time to die away. Now I will pop the balloon again, but now the room is filled with absorption material and you will hear the difference. You heard that the reverberation time is a lot smaller now because a lot of sound is being absorbed by this material. In this way we use this room to measure the absorption of seats and of acoustic materials for theatres and concert halls. The demand for the new auditorium in Zwolle, the Netherlands, was to combine theatre and concert hall using only natural acoustics. Because both functions usually differ in shape, volume, reverberation, the architects were reluctant at first, but became enthusiastic for the design when Poets came up with their new idea of an internally changeable volume. Uh, in the reverberation room we have heard that one way to change the reverberation time is by adding absorption material. Another way to change the reverberation time is to change the volume of the room. That is done by two things. The main idea is that the ceilings will go up for about 8 meters high and therefore we can get additional volume above the ceilings. And we also get an additional volume of a gallery that is all around the theater. The idea for that gallery 
we got when we did the research from the Royal Albert Hall. Uh, the second element here is that uh, along the orchestra we have an orchestra shell which couples off the volume of the stage tower but gives an additional 4000 cubic meters to, into the theater. So that means that in total we have about 11,000 cubic meters. These side balconies uh, have been designed as being uh, movable so we can move the side balconies inwards in order to make the, sta the stage opening smaller. We can also put them in a wide position so we have the very large stage opening and that is very good for the acoustic connection between the stage tower and the orchestra shell on one side and the acoustic environment of the audience on this side. So therefore we need a very big stage opening. Sufficient diffusion of sound is at least as important as the reverberation time. In this model, spherical shapes on the walls are used as acoustical diffusion. Uh, the scale of this model is uh, 1 to 12. That means that all the sizes, all the dimensions are 12 times smaller than in reality. Uh, of course the materials and the acoustic properties of the materials have to scale down also. So therefore we test all the materials that you see here have been tested in a small reverberation room to look for their acoustic properties and if they are usable to apply in such an acoustic scale model. To standardize the measurements and ease the interpretation, Poets uses a standard program setup. Therefore we use an array of microphones which are positioned along a straight line out of the center of the hall. Here you see the sound source we use in the scale model. It's of course uh, not comparable with a music instrument, but this is used to make pink noise with a frequency that is high enough to be used in the scale model. The reason a high-pitched sound is being used is that for correct measurements the wavelength should be scaled down similarly with the model. Because the wavelength is inversely related to the frequency, the frequency automatically becomes higher. The sound produced by the source is a pink noise that contains all the relevant frequencies for the acoustics. The pink noise you've just heard is from the noise source that is used in the scale model to measure the impulse response. The impulse response is the response of the microphone and the hall on an impulsive sound, as if I clap in my hands and we record the arrival of all the sound energy with the time. Here on the screen we now see the energy time curve. We see the arrival of the energy of sound versus the time. We can distinguish in that between the arrival of the direct sound, then we usually have uh, some early reflections, and then we have the reverberation, which is the statistical sound. Another type of equipment we use in this scale models is this type of equipment, which is a dummy head on scale, a scale 1 to 12, with microphones on both its ears. This dummy head is being used for hourization. What do I mean with hourization? I mean that we record a binaural response, so we measure the sound response from the source to the left ear and to the right ear and by using the computer multiplying these measurements with real music we can listen to the acoustics in the hall with stereo headphones and we can listen to the sound as if we were in the real hall. You will now hear an example of an oralization of speech in the theatre situation and in its concert situation using the scale model of Zwolle, as if you were seated on the first balcony. Now the auditorium has been transformed into a theatre arrangement with increased sound absorption. By adapting the acoustics, this concert hall could also be used as a theatre. At the moment, the hall is a concert arrangement. You have heard a big acoustic difference between both situations. Also, that speech is less intelligible when there is too much reverberation. Now you will listen to music in both theatre and concert hall arrangement.
All these techniques and measurements using scale models are a valuable tool for acousticians like Pertz to check the design in an early stage and to judge the audibility of design changes, as well as to give feedback to architects and principals as in the Zwoller project.